So in this video, I want to talk to you about how to set up your pipelines and deal stages, specifically within HubSpot, but the things that I'm saying right now are actually applicable for any CRM. Um, big question that uh, we often get is how do we set up pipelines so that they accurately reflect our business process? They actually help us sell, right? Um, and there is kind of a science behind this. Uh, first, let's look at why would you want a pipeline? Why, what does a pipeline really do for your business? Well, it's, it's a great way to keep track of your deals, but it's not just for showing how much deals you've closed, won or lost in, in the past. Um, the main reason that you want to have a pipeline is literally the name says it, right? You want to be able to see what's in the pipeline, what's in the future. So it's an important tool for doing accurate forecasting on your sales. And HubSpot has this feature where you can build multiple pipelines. So one question that we often get is, should I build one pipeline or do I need more than one? My sort of go-to approach is that I will build an extra pipeline if I find that I have a secondary process or a sales process for a different type of product or service that is very different from my initial. So if there's two processes that maybe you're selling to a particular group of customers in one way, and there's a group of customers you sell to as well in a completely different fashion with a different process, that should be a separate pipeline. And it should not be a separate pipeline if all you're doing basically is saying, well, we're selling the same product in the same way, but in a different country or with like a different little label, something like that on it. In that case, what I would do, at least in HubSpot, is use a property on the deal to uh, identify that thing. So if it's like a country, for example, um, uh, I, would, I would put it in there and then use a filter on my, my main pipeline to basically see um, the sales happening in, for example, a particular country, or if it's like a new business or existing business, something like that should not be a reason to create a new pipeline in my eyes. And the next question that often comes up with pipelines is when is something actually a deal? When should it be on the pipeline? Um, and this is a funny one because what I've seen a lot actually in the past, mostly when it's a very sales driven organization, is that the first stage of the pipeline gets used uh, as a sort of a, a a big dump of all the prospects that we want to talk to in the future. Um, and I can understand that from the point of view of wanting to see everything in one place. Um, but what this does is it skews the, um, the use that your pipeline has for forecasting, because you're going to basically put this big block at the front of all these people that do not uh, want to, uh, uh, or who've pr probably never even heard of you before. And you're going to put it on your pipeline and it's going to basically mess up your conversion rates. It's going to uh, show a lot of inactive uh, deals on there for a very long time. It's not a good place to put them. What I would do as sort of a rule of thumb for when is something a deal, it's either when your prospect has risen their hand through a contact form or a quote form or request a demo form saying, I want to hear from you. Or when your sales team has done some cold outreach and they've confirmed there's at least some basic level of interest to continue talks with you. So those are the sort of two rule of thumbs that I use to determine if something is a deal. If it's not, if it doesn't ma match those criteria, then it should just be a prospect that is, you know, some kind of life cycle stage or qualification criteria on there, uh, but it's not actually a deal or an opportunity uh, yet. So then the key question really is how do you determine your deal stages? How many should there be and what should you call them? And my big uh, go-to rule of thumb here is that every stage should represent the buyer taking a step closer to actually buying something. Because if it, it doesn't represent the buyer taking a step, then it's actually not progress. You want to avoid that the stages are just there to make your sales team look busy. And there's actually a cool little exercise that you can do to distill your deal stages. And I'm not going to take all the credit for this. I've learned this from uh, Kyle Jepson, who is a um, professor, I guess, at, uh, at HubSpot Academy. He knows a lot about uh, this kind of stuff. And he wrote a blog about this uh, uh, quite some time ago, actually, but that I still use to this day to uh, build up my uh, pipeline stages. And the exercise is as follows. Your first step is to take every step of your sales process uh, and just jot it down on a piece of paper or in like a certain sort of table. And then divide those into two rows, one being all the steps that you take as the buyer, uh, sorry, as the seller, obviously, and all the steps that your buyer needs to take. Just put in everything that you can think of that needs to logically happen in your mind for uh, a deal going from the open stage at the start all the way to uh, the closed stage. 
And then the next step is to go through that list and take out everything that can be skipped. And you need to be strict here, right? So you need to leave only those points on this list that are absolutely essential every single time. I'll give you some examples, things like follow-up or booking time to schedule the next meeting or sending a contract, things like that. Um, they may feel unavoidable, but they may actually be very skippable. So be strict there and, and uh, take those out. Next, you wanna go through your list again and make sure that any remaining deal stages meet the following three criteria. Number one, you wanna make sure that it's factual, meaning that it is something that has actually happened and that it's not just something that is a hunch on the, on the account of the sales rep. Number two, you wanna make sure that it's inspectable, meaning that there's some kind of proof in the system that you can point at and say, look, this thing has actually happened. And number three, you want this to be buyer centric. That goes back to what I said at the start. You want this stuff to represent the buyer making progress in the, in the sales process and not just you doing busy work. And the last step you want to take is remove any doubt about whether the action of your deal stage name has already occurred or whether it still needs to happen. And the best way to do that is to take the deal stage name and just put it in the past tense, like demo completed or contract received. And now you should have a nice and clean list of deal stages that you can use to set up your pipeline with. The last thing to do is to just slap an open stage at the beginning, which represents any new deals coming in, either from a uh, whether that's um, the prospect raising their hand themselves or your uh, sales folk having confirmed that there's something there and a closed lost stage at the end for those deals that do not go the mile. Um, and that's it. That's really uh, the sort of the scientific method <laughs> that I use to uh, plan out my uh, pipelines and deal stages for the clients here at Gradient. Um, I hope that's been helpful to you. Um, if, uh, if so, or if not, or if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them and uh, uh, catch you in a next potential video.